Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial uh, on Tiny XML tools I'll be using, CodeBlox 13.12, the compiler is MinGW 4.8.1. The first step in the process is to create a global variable to call that TinyXML. Uh, in your system at home, I encourage that you would uh, use TinyXML uh, with a postfix for the version number that you're using. Um, the base path where I've installed TinyXML is, for me, is C drive MinGW 4.8.1 backslash libraries, backslash tinyxml++. Uh, the next field is the include location, and that's where the headers for tinyxml will be located. In this case, it's c drive mingw 4.8.1, backslash libraries, backslash tinyxml++, backslash include. The lib field here is the folder in which uh, my program will look for the any compiled library files. So that would be .so, .a, .lib files. And in this case, it's mingw 4.8.1, forward slash libraries, forward slash tinyxml++, uh, backslash lib. Um, okay, so moving on to my build options. Um, in, order to, in order to allow my program to find the header files and the lib files, I use a couple of macros here. So, um, first of all, in order to allow uh, my program to find the header files, I use the macro tinyxml, which I created. That's my global variable, and I request the .include field. That is both uh, for my debug build and also my release build. Uh, likewise, I do the same for the library. So, in order that my program can find the uh, ticpp uh, uh, lib file, um, or, or you might be using libticpp.a or the uh, Linux SO equ equivalent, um, you use the tinyxml and you ask for the .lib field. Now I've got that in both my debug and my release build. Um, my linker settings just look like this, so between debug and release I just add the ticpp link file there. Now. In this program, we're going to create a uh, little XML file that looks like this. There will be an XML header, there will be a root node called settings, and then the root node will have a child node called video, and there will be two attributes, one called width and one called height, and there will also be a comment embedded in there by the program uh, describing exactly what that node does. Okay, so um, now in order to use TinyXML, uh, you want to uh, include the header ticpp.h, um, but uh, I use the wrapper, uh, which comes out of the box, uh, so I define the macro tixml underscore use underscore ticpp. We'll be using the wrapper for this tutorial. Now, uh, this is our program entry point, our int main. The first step is, and we're going to start the tutorial. So, in the, in the start here, I specify the file name that I'm going to both create and load, which is config.xml. I create two local variables to our main function called uh, width and height, and I set them some default values, in this case 640 by 480, and then send all of that data to the console for the user to look at. The next step is, is I create an XML file. You do that by creating a document object, which comes from the TICPP namespace. In my case, I've called this one XML file. Um, an XML file is uh, an actual document here along with an XML file are tree data structures so we build them up by attaching nodes to our tree. Um, the first step in creating your XML file is to create your uh, your XML header. We do that in this case by creating a declaration. The declaration exists in the TICPP uh, namespace. I call this one P header node. The reason why I prefix that with a P is because it's a pointer. Um, so I instantiate a new TCPIP declaration object here. Um, and these properties here correspond with your um, versions and your encoding details, which you can see over here. So I've got XML version equals 1.0 and the encoding equals UTF-8. So that's where we specify that. Um, now, in order to add the header that you just created to your XML document, you call XML.link and child and you pass to that point at your header node. Now, you don't have to worry about deleting that header node. Um, because what will happen is, is the XML file, the, the XML file here, the TC, uh, the TICPP document destructor will automatically clean up any of the um, objects that you've attached to it. Um, so uh, we don't have to worry about calling delete in this case. Um, now the next step that I'm going to follow here is, is I'm going to create a settings element. You do so 
by instantiating a, um, an element object which comes from the TICPP namespace. The next thing that I'm going to do is to create the comment object. Um, oh, actually, I should probably cover that. Um, in this case here, the parameter that you pass to the constructor for the TICPP element is going to be the name of the element, which in this case is settings, and the name here would correspond in your XML file with your tag. Um, now I'll create a uh, comment object. The comment object is for the TICPP, uh, is in the TICPP namespace. Um, I call this one pvideo comment. I prefix with a p because it's a pointer. I instantiate my new comment here, and the string that I pass to the comment method is what the, the way that the comment will appear in the XML file. In this case, the video node sets the display settings used by the game, and over here, the video node sets the display settings used by the game. Um, the next thing that I'll do is I, inst I, is I will instantiate another element. This one is a P video element, and uh, the parameter that I'm passing to the element, once again, is going to be the name and the way that the element appears in the XML file, which will appear thus uh, thusly. Uh, now, in order to set the attributes of the video node, in which case um, this is going to be for the resolution for my game, um, I set the I, I set an, I call the set attribute method. Um, now. The first parameter that the set attribute takes is going to be the name of the, the string name of the attribute, and the second parameter there is going to be the value of the attribute. In this case, it's going to be the local width that we created and the local height. Um, now, the next thing that we do is um, I want to attach the comment to the settings element. So what that would do in the XML document is, is there's our settings element there, and we're going to attach the comment. So the comment is going to be the first thing that's going to appear. So we link to the very end of the settings node our uh, P video comment. The next thing that we do is we want to put our P video element or our, our video element that we attached our attributes to, we want to attach that to the settings element. So I call P settings element here, link end child P video element. So that will attach the video element here to the settings node. The next thing that we want to do is we want to attach the settings node to the XML file, which we do with the we link with the link and child method. Um, in order to create the file, we call XML file dot save file method, and we pass to that the file name, and then we send a small message to the console, letting them know that we uh, letting the user know that we built the file successfully and we saved it. Um, now I put everything in try catch box here because XML um, tiny XML throws exceptions um, unless you specify otherwise. It's a good idea to put everything um, just to be safe inside try catch box. Um, now moving on to the next step, I reset my tutorial variables. In this case, it's just going to be width and height set to negative one, and I send a few messages to the console so that the user knows what's going on. Then I will load the XML document. We do so by instantiating a document object, and that comes from the TICPP namespace. In my case, I'm calling this one XML file. Um, now, the XML file is a tree, is a DOM tree, so it, uh, when we load the document, it will load all of it, into the entire document, into uh, the, from, from our file into the document object, all at once. So it's not a SAX parser. Um, all right, so the uh, first thing that I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to create a pointer to an element which comes from the TICPP namespace, and I'm going to call this one P root element, and I'm going to query my XML file to get the first element that has the name settings. The second parameter here, false, is specifying that I do not, that in the event that uh, there is no settings uh, tag, is no settings tag or element or node, I do not wish uh, to send, I do not wish to generate any kind of exceptions. Um, so in the event that it doesn't generate an exception and terminate the program, then it will simply return a null element. So I do a little test here to see if our element is, uh, actually exists. If it does, then I uh, create I create a pointer to another element, and I call this one P video element. I then ask the uh, root element for the um, first child element called video. Um, if there is a video element, then I uh, will go through and I will call the get attribute method uh, on that element, where I will get the attribute width, and um, I pass to that a pointer to the uh, variable that I want 
to uh, put the width into, which in this case I'm using my uh, address of operator there to get the pointer for width. I pass false to that because in the event that there is no attribute named width, I don't want it to throw an exception. So my false there will specify. Now if I hover the mouse over that, you can probably see there's bool thrown if not found. Uh, so I do the same there for the height. I'll then send some information to the user so they know what's going on, that we've successfully loaded the file, which file we loaded, the width and the height, and capture any ex any uh, exceptions. Now, that uh, the, if the tutorial has run successfully, then um, I want to just let the user know that that did. Okay, now uh, let's run the program and have a look at how it works. So, uh, first of all, we've got uh, running the tutorial program was successful. That's the um, file name, the width, and the height at 480. Building, uh, we build our XML file, which was successful, and we saved config.xml. We then clear the tutorial variables, display the values there, which have been reset to negative 1 and negative 1. Uh, clearing those was successful. We then load the XML file, which appears to have been successful. We loaded config.xml, and then we have uh, grabbed the values 480 for width and 480 from height, and the tutorials run successfully. Uh, if you liked this tutorial, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, any projects that you build with this, I'm certainly interested in uh, what you do with the tiny XML library. Uh, until next time, uh, please take care. And that is the result of our file. Thanks for watching.